Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday, April 3rd. I'm James Spann. Very windy on the Gulf Coast today. Had a wake low down there, uh, producing some very strong wind gusts up here. Just very cool and very wet. We'll check some of the Skycam shots around the network this afternoon. First off, that's coming from Tuscaloosa. Steady, cool, light rain falling. Temperatures only in the 50s today. And don't expect a whole lot of change tomorrow. And down south, a really nasty situation. Uh, a big MCS uh, came through the northern Gulf, and on the back edge of that, a wake low developed. That's where the pressure gradient gets very tight, and uh, winds have gusted uh, to, well, we had one report of 79-mile-per-hour wind gusts just off the Louisiana coast on an oil platform. And in Mobile, the winds gusted to uh, 53 miles per hour at Mobile Regional and 66 miles per hour at Brookley Field. And, of course, that big Carnival cruise ship uh, came off the mooring at the uh, uh, BAE down there and is floating around in the Mobile River, we understand. So quite a mess. And there's the Dauphin Island uh, sky cam. Uh, those two sky cam observation points showing peak winds of about 45 miles an hour as the uh, stronger winds came through. All right, very active weather across the southeast United States uh, with a series of thunderstorm areas out ahead of that big deep trough in Texas. Uh, there's that first MCS coming across the northern Gulf, and again, on the back edge of the rain. And at the th time that image was taken, about 242, it was around Pensacola. That's where winds are in the 40 to 60 mile per hour range with occasional higher gusts. And that will keep moving on the Gulf Coast toward, uh, or the Gulf Coast toward uh, Fort Walton Beach and Panama City this afternoon. Up this way, it's cool. Hey, you know, the models had us in the 60s. Well, forget that. Evaporative cooling kicked in. Look at Oxford, Mississippi. They've got 39 at mid-afternoon. Come on. Tupelo, 45. Haleyville, 44. They're saying, what 60s? Uh, Birmingham, 55. The, the only spot at 60 is Anniston uh, in Alexander City on the eastern side of the state. And around the nation, numbers all over the board. Look at the cold pocket over Oklahoma and Texas, and you go farther north, it's like 25 degrees warmer over South Dakota. Uh, but again, uh, next week looks warm. That's the, the big story, I think, for next week, the warmest weather so far this year. But clearly, uh, for us tonight and tomorrow, we'll be very cool and cloudy and wet. Uh, there's the composite. And we've got light rain uh, across much of North Alabama this afternoon. And you can see more rain off to the west. And, yeah, that's some uh, snow falling in parts of western Oklahoma out there in that colder pocket uh, underneath the cold core. But we'll just have a cool rain falling at times tonight and tomorrow, an additional one inch of rain possible here. Uh, severe weather potential for the rest of this afternoon and tonight, a slight risk uh, down toward uh, Austin, Texas, and San Antonio. And then tomorrow, uh, the standard slight risk over parts of Florida – and again, I think the main risk is south of Interstate 10. There is an enhancement south of Interstate 10. Uh, Jacksonville south, down through Orlando, Tampa Bay, Daytona Beach. Uh, where it could, could get pretty rough down there. Ocala, Gainesville, and there could be a few tornadoes. So if you're in that region, you might want to keep a close eye on the radar tomorrow. And then on day three, which is Friday, low end 5% probabilities over South Florida. And there's the rain for the next five days. And like we talked about, I think we'll get it about one inch here. The bigger numbers closer to the Gulf Coast, closer to the uh, low, uh, low pressure center that will be passing through there tomorrow. Uh, let's look at the GFS. This is the 12Z run, valid at 1 o'clock local time tomorrow afternoon. That's pretty impressive dynamic forcing coming in here, a positive tilt trough. And down below that, the surface low, very close to Pensacola. And there's going to be a warm front extending east of that. And the warm sector should be... Uh, really south of uh, Dothan to Jacksonville. And again, the core threat of tornado activity would be probably south of Interstate 10. So for those of you in Florida, be aware of that. Up this way, just a cool, rainy day. Although the models are trying to bring in some warmer air. In fact, I, I note that both models are showing all of a sudden a high of 72 tomorrow. I don't know if we'll get up in there. Uh, they, they busted it bad today. Uh, I think tomorrow the high at best will be in the low 60s, but but we'll see. All right, Friday, uh, the weather starts to improve. Clouds will linger Friday morning. The clearing should begin Friday afternoon. And if the sun can break out, we'll do upper 60s. And then Saturday as we kick off the weekend. And by the way, a minute ago when I talked about the, the models showing 72, I was actually looking at the Pensacola Moss products for tomorrow. I think we stay in the 50s. 
In fact, uh, I'll punch up the uh, Birmingham numbers here, and I would imagine that they will be considerably cooler. Yeah, uh, the GFS has 56, the NAM has 58, so we'll be in the 50s tomorrow. Friday, we could break into the 60s with a clearing sky, and Saturday looks gorgeous. I mean, that looks good. Sunny with mid-70s, you got to like that. We'll start the day Saturday morning down around 40. And again, the, some of those colder pockets up in northeast Alabama might uh, flirt with mid-30s and a touch of frost up around Valley Head and places like that. Sunday looks great. Uh, lots of sun with uh, mid-70s. Monday, moisture starts to come back, partly sunny. I don't think we'll mention a chance of a shower now. Highs well up in the 70s. And uh, Tuesday, oh boy, big old nasty trough coming out of the southwest. Surface low forms. This has a dual uh, structure, one low uh, below Lubbock, and we've got one near uh, Kansas City. But we're still dry, and the model uh, GFS has us running up to 81 on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, here comes the storms. Uh, this is Wednesday afternoon at 1 o'clock, and there's no really deep surface low nearby to get the winds back. This is not a classic tornado look. It could be a straight-line wind event. And then the following day, this is Thursday the 11th, the uh, batch of storms coming in here. And understand, every run will look different. Clearly, the, the idea of severe weather has to be on the board. We'll have a lot of surface-based instability, but in terms of the mesoscale features, we just don't know that yet. Uh, this is the G uh, European, same time, valid uh, Thursday evening. It's got us wet. So somewhere in that late Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday time frame of next week, we could see some active, maybe severe weather. Have a much better idea, we'll say, in maybe a couple of days. We'll check the end of the forecast. This is April the 19th, and that looks just uh, warm and dry if that's right. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And don't forget, if you can, watch us on the live stream or the television side on ABC 3340 News this evening at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless. Be sure to catch the next episode of Just Talking It Up on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. Hey, you forgot our names. No. You did? You forgot our names. Don't be silly. I'm Janet. You're a crash. See? <laughs> She's just like a goose. She wakes up in a new world every day. <laughs>